today's Monday, the road to Hana Day. I'm up. Everybody else is up. It's just taking a while for people to get ready. Chris is um, gonna come around that corner any minute. Maybe. Maybe not. We're headed down the road to Hana. We got a, a local island boy to shuttle us around. You recognize me from season six, <laughs> or episode six. We're your king in the bush. Yeah. I'm that guy. Our first stop was Grandma's Coffee House. It was fairly busy and we had a lot ahead of us, so we passed on getting any coffee. My hair is so flat. This is so bad. The tour will pick up as you continue to drive. We decided to use the Shaka Guide for our journey. This was a handy app for your smartphone that uses GPS to guide you from place to place. Our travel guide, who we affectionately named Brad, was seriously on point from where to stop, where to park, what we were scouting, and when to hang back. He also gave us a few history lessons and fun facts along the way. Our first lookout point was Mono Wainui Gulch, and it was super windy. From the gulch, you could see Pokaway Sea Arch, and we were informed, by Brad, that this arch was created when Haleakala's lava collided with the cold Pacific waters. If you've never heard of the road to Hana, it's a 65 mile drive along the coast of Maui, through the small town of Hana. It's an absolutely beautiful drive, but it's full of twists and turns which make it quite an adventure. This is St. Joseph Church, one of the oldest churches in Maui and surprisingly still active despite the area's population. The first church in the area was built here around 1882 and the current structure was built in 1911 and there's a Catholic cemetery just around back that predates everything. Want anything? Yeah, I can use a snack. This was Calpo store. Basically, a snack shack filled with vending machine type food, ice cream bars, and made to order hot dogs. It wasn't super impressive, but I'm sure it saved the lives of other travelers going the other way since there aren't really a whole lot of places to stop for food. We decided to do it backwards, which meant we went counterclockwise on the Hana Highway, starting in Kua and ending in Paia on the North Shore. Dad. What? Hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> <laughs> we put the top what? on the convertible. I put my windows out. And now Chris can't sit in the car Unlock properly. The seat. <laughs> I don't think it's made for a man to be in the back seat. We decided to get out. This was Lele Falls, our first waterfall stop. And since you can't see it from the road, we had to make a short hike in. Once we got there, a few of us went for a dip. It was unanimously reported that the water was ice cold and super refreshing. Like, literally take your breath away. There are several stops along the drive where you can see waterfalls, explore hidden beaches, and stop at snack shacks and fruit stands. Our next stop was Laulima Farms Fruit Stand. This little organic fruit stand had a pretty wide variety of fresh fruit, more than the usual little koi and papayas. Are these bananas ready today? Oh, they look a little green still. Yeah, like tomorrow. Sweetness. What's up, bro? What's up? Yeah. Eat this banana. Mm. Banana ripper. It's surrounded by gardens and these cool bamboo grove seating areas that you can hang out inside. I don't know if you can hear that. All the bamboo creaking, clicking against each other. We ended up getting a few fruit plates to split, and the cost of everything was pretty reasonable. I put it down to the bottom. It's one of the worst oranges I've ever had. 
One destination we all agreed to stop at was the pools of Oeho. We're at the state park. What state park? Not state park. We're state park. of hunger. <laughs> park. We're pretty hungry. I'd like a sandwich. Yes, we just came from a cruise. We're gonna go what see the through? pools. <laughs> the seven pools. Can't swim in them though. We can pay $30 to come in here per vehicle. So we have three vehicles. It's 90 bucks that they made today. So we're hiking down to the waterfalls, the seven waterfalls. And uh, can't swim in them today because of some safety issues. Because there could be a flash flood and there's no sensor or something at the top to let people know. But we can go look at them, right Angelie? Huh? The pools of Oeho are probably the most popular attraction of East Maui because the waterfalls and pools are so absolutely stunning. Plus, it's a short hike in and there are nice clean bathrooms. Seriously, there are parts, actually a lot of parts, that are on a one-way road, so you have to stop and take turns to drive. This is Wailua Falls, Maui's most photographed waterfall. For this one, we didn't have to get out of the car, but we did, and boy, were we glad we did. Darren ended up going for another dip, the rest of us hung out and enjoyed getting misted. Okay, I feel like I need to point this out. So a lot of effort went into this look. About a month ago, Chris scoured the internet searching for this exact shirt. This one, shown here, by Thomas Magnum P.I. So granted, we were starving at this point, but dang, that chicken was amazing! Black Sand Beach is surrounded by a very intimate cove with really accessible trails down to it. There's something about it that draws people here. Black Sand Beach is not just a black sand beach. There are numerous impressive naturally formed structures like sea stacks, arches, blowholes, and this really cool lava tube down below. Going into the back cave. Maybe. Hello. Your dad. I can't. <laughs> Check it out, there's like little natural lights. Ooh, this is creepy. Look at that That's one back there. Cool. Oh, wow. Wow. We should get married here in the dark. This is the secret lava tube. Probably my favorite stop because it was so understated. We literally could have drove right past this and never known it was there. Bye Kelly. Bye. This was all an elaborate ploy to get you to go in there. This is my home now. <laughs> it smells funny in here. Hi Kelly. Hi. <sighs> okay. Come on down. It's the layer. <sighs> going spelunking in a big cave. This would be a really cool cave to dress in white with stringy hair and just sit in the corner with your hands over your neck. There's like a, that guy? There's a person <laughs> in the corner. Hi there. Hi. Hello. Hello. Be careful about bumping your head. Okay. What did uh, Brad call this thing? A lava tube. Is it lava tube? Yeah. So you can kind of stand up here, but not all the way. Does it keep going? Well, there's light up here. <laughs> you get yourself? Oh, wow. This was our drive through waterfall experience. Oh. 
bears. See the small, medium, and large. There's three bears there. That's cool. That's fantastic. It's like a little fun pool. Wow. The water's falling. Jing's Pond. This was the last stop for us, and we were the only people there, so we hung out for a bit and took a quick swim. going to flow, and all the coordinating of people and events, Chris had made us dinner reservations at Mama's Fish House months ago so we could actually have some alone time, just the two of us. Okay, we're done with the road to Hana, and now we're at Mama's Fish House, and we look like schlubs. So we're going to go find a bathroom and get uh, gussied up a bit, although there is absolutely no dress code here. I had to look that up because I'm wearing shorts. Short shorts. Short shorts. Short shorts. Yeah. Whoa, hello there. Hi. How'd you do that? The contents of this bag. <laughs> uh, your hair doesn't even look windblown anymore. It is. <laughs> it Mine's is very mess. tangled. I know I the feeling. Redlocks right now. I can't even run my fingers through it. That's how mine was too. There's the ocean. And this is Mama's fish house. I'd heard about it, but other than that, I know nothing. And I can already tell I'm going to be excited because. <laughs> The interior is about as delightfully Hawaii, 80s Hawaiian as, as you could possibly get. Yeah. So, let's go explore the grounds before we grab a cocktail. What do you say? Sounds great. Okay. This is a canoe. It's an outrigger. You can tell because it has one of those outriggers. <laughs> <laughs> These are places you can rent and stay on the property. This is the stage. Is it? Is it for outdoor concerts? Yep. So Mama's is widely considered the best food in all of Maui. And uh, they obviously specialize in fresh fish and seafood, but they have steak options too. I really don't know what to expect from the menu, but there is something called a Tahitian black pearl dessert that they say you have to save room for because it's fantastic. Anyways, so that's what we're going to do. Just the outside grounds, you come in through a gate and there's all these torches burning and it's elegant and light music playing and people dressed in all sorts of things. I saw, I saw a guy wearing a baseball hat. I saw this guy who looked like Magnum P.I. No way. Yeah. Like the real one or the like, one that's on TV now? Like the real one. That's right. Yeah. He had the shortest shorts. <laughs> Tastes like dark rum because I just sucked it off the top. <laughs> you mix that up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Very delicious. Very delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is a cucumber mint refresher. <laughs> that is refreshing. Try mine. Mm. Try my little man head. Who wins? Oh, that is really good. Yeah, it's a good mind. Really thing. good. Mm -hmm. um, I think I win. Oh, well, I'll soon find out if you offer me a drink of your beverage. Can you have a drink? Thanks. Tastes very good, but not very exciting. It I mean, it tastes, exa it tastes exactly what you expect it to be. It's just coconut milk, mint leaves, booze blended up, which there's nothing wrong with. <laughs> but this has complexity and depth. Yeah. It's also really sour, more sour than I'm used to in my Thai bean, and I kind of dig that. This is the base for my Mai Tai, it's very similar. It's um, basically you just go with light rum, dark rum, and then do the pineapple juice, but you also hit it with lime juice, so it pops up the ice. Yeah. brightness. You have an extra lime just in case you need more of that. Yeah. 
Not a bad table, huh, Kel? Kelly is frantically working on logistics because when you come to Maui to have a wedding, everybody asks you all the questions. So I'm 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 cutting I'm cutting her a little slack. Normally I'd ridicule her endlessly, and I have only made one joke so far, just one, just one. about her being on her phone. Right. And then I put all my garnishes on her garnish. It's a new record, ladies and gentlemen. My go-to whiskey of choice in Portland, which costs roughly twenty dollars a bottle, maybe twenty-six. Sells for twenty dollars a shot. Yes. For a picture. I dig this logo. It's very. What is she holding, though? Maybe she's a giant, and she's like, "This is your spear." Chris, we got problems. Why? Everything looks really good. Good problems to have, Kel. I'm looking at the wine list. Because wine is for sophisticated people like me. Yeah, we ordered something. We ordered, we ordered a trio of sashimi, mm -hmm. which for those of you that don't know, they take the fish and they give it a nice sea salt massage while it's still alive, and then marinate it in soy sauce until it dies. But it's a humane death. And then they rip the skin off, and a Hawaiian priest blesses the skin, and then they throw that back to the sea so a new fish can grow. And then after that, they hack up the fish and you eat it without cooking it. It's delicious. It's really good. Yeah. How do you know? We haven't had it yet, but normally it's good. That's we'll see shady. how this stacks up. We just got a gift to our table. Yeah. Please explain. From, from Mama. So the poppy seed bread with the, uh, uh, what was the butter? It was sweet. Uh, macadamia? Yeah. And yeah. Then this is a uh, oyster bisque. Mm. And you're supposed to drink it. How's that rate? It's really gross. You should probably let me drink yours. That's not going to happen. So we have salmon. Yes. Ahi. Yes. Opaka uh -huh. I think. I think you're right. I'm gonna go with that. Wait, wait. There no, were a lot of words just now when you yeah, dropped he, this he off. He said it a lot more than mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. This is the ahi with ponzu, shisu, and uh -huh. kukui nuts. Salmon with lime chili and papaya with pink salt. And then kampachi with big chutney and Molokai black sea salt. Which one are you most excited about? Uh, you know what's odd? Is I want to try this one the most because I don't really care for salmon, so I'm you hoping it'll, care for it? it'll it'll uh, change. Me. That'll change your life. Ready? Let me see you take a bite. I'm gonna feed you first. Okay, you ready? This is yeah. yours. Mm. I don't know if that I don't know if that salmon will change your life, but the amount of salt on it was pretty great. Yes, mm -hmm. good. Mm. It is good. So this is my kampachi stuffed fish. Huh. Wait, wait. Stuffed kampachi ah. with lobster and crab stuff. And then here's the other part of the lobster tail. I mean, it's got a macadamia nut crush with a per blanc and potatoes. And those are good. Those are good. What do you got there, Kel? I got soup. I just got <laughs> some soup here. Sort of the soup. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a fish stew, bouillon? Bouillon base. Bouillon base, yeah. And this nice breadstick here with a huge heaping dollop of garlic butter. Is that what that is, is butter? Yeah. And uh, crab leg and all, all the goodies here. Here's the fish. Eat it. It's really good. It's got like a really tasty balance between like fishiness and the seafoodness. And you can taste them cold. You know, like that, the smell, the taste of strong fish, and obviously the taste of like crab and then shellfish. Mm -hmm. They're two very distinct but uh, identifiable and delicious tastes. Here, you can try it. Mm. I love the macadamia coating. crust. Yes, mm -hmm. that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And you can really taste too. like how it was prepared more than the fish. I'm just gonna eat my soup. You gotta like ginger though if you're gonna get in on this soup. <laughs> Would you like a bite? No. Would you like a, a sip? No. It's got a good balance. I don't taste too much ginger at all actually. No? A little lemongrass. Oh, the aftermath of Chris. Go ahead if you need Are you giving me the shrimp? I'm giving you the shrimp. I don't know if I could finish it. It's so beefy. Oh, 
really still going at her booyah base. Mm. She's a happy camper. <laughs> this is surprisingly delicious. That big crostini with uh, the garlic butter on there. Oh my god, that was tasty. So tasty. Oh, mama. How's your soup? Yeah, look at like look, look around me. There's quite a bit in that in that stew. Kelly, what do we never order when we eat out? Dessert. What did we just order? We ordered dessert. Yeah, because they have a signature dessert. It's supposed to be it's a Tahitian black pearl. Yeah. And other than that, we we have no idea. A Tahitian black pearl. Spin it, spin it for me, babe. Let me see the back side of this shell. Wait, let me see if I can do it like it's one of those things. Okay, do it like it's smooth. one of those things. Nope, can't do it like it's one of those things. Look at that. Look at that little whipped cream tail there. It keeps the shell together. Oh, it's closing. It's gonna crash. It's falling. Stop doing that. It's like a $20 dessert. <laughs> ready for bite? Yeah, ready. Having an experience? Please get your hands out of your shirt. <laughs> Are you a new man now? Totally. I got tired of uh, trying to describe the food because I always think I sound like a douche. Yeah. So I went a different route. Your turn. That's good. Way to go, Kel. <laughs> <laughs> Do I sound like a douche? Um, no, it's really. Like it's a heavy chocolate, it's a dark chocolate. To me, it reminds me of like But that little bit of citrus, the, that's the little boy? Passion fruit. Oh, okay. That was really good with it. The tart and the dark. It reminds me of like one of those together. oranges you like. Yes, I think that's why I like it so much. Yeah. Kelly, how was your dining experience here at Mama's? Well, I finished everything. All our plates ended up looking like this, like a child was eating here. Yeah, and then finger painting it. Yeah, <laughs> like you didn't want to see the kid after you saw this plate, because you know he's just going to be covered in chocolate. Yeah. Which I am right now, and that's why I'm not on camera, because I look like an eight-year-old. It's in my hair. True. Let's talk about dinner. <laughs> Chris, put that down. <laughs> my mom's experience was great. Mm -hmm. Top notch. I would give the uh, ambiance a 10. Yes. I would give the service a 10. Mm -hmm. I would give the food a 9 for an overall experience of a 9. Because the only way you get a 10 is if you get all 10s. That was exceptional. Very, very beginning. The bisque, that mm -hmm. was really great. And that was a sashimi. The third one with the chutney, that was a 10. That was like a 10 thing for me. I loved it. Where was I? You're at the bully base, which you're calling a stew. It's, it feels like a stew. Hard nine. I'm gonna say everything was a nine. Okay. Except for that one piece of fish with the chutney that was a perfect ten. Alright. And the service and ambiance? Oh, ten. ten. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, hands down. It had like so much water. Water's really great here. 